Hey guys, I'm Ivory and today I'm going to be answering the most frequent questions I get as a nail technician. I don't think I talk about it too much on my channel, but anyone that knows me, like knows me knows me, knows that my first job was a nail technician. The beginning of senior year in high school, I did go to nail school and by the end of senior year, I started working at a nail salon. It's something that I did all throughout college and even after college because you know, I didn't come out with a job offer right away after getting a degree. <laughs> so the time that I started working at a nail salon to when I stopped, although I, you know, I kind of went on and off again, but I would say my permanent job as a nail technician was about six years. I do also want to note that the answers that I give to these questions are from my personal experience and my my own opinions. I'm not speaking for every nail technician out there, so don't take my answers as a end-all be-all, okay? I'm sure it will vary depending on who you ask. But before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to post new videos every single week, and also be sure to follow me on my social media. Everything is underscore Ivory Cherry. So the first question I get a lot is, do you get a lot of men? It is not uncommon to see men at all. I would see them more so for pedicures than I would see for manicures. And to piggyback off that, do men actually get their nails painted? Yes. Some guys don't want any polish. Some guys want like a shiny buffer. I did have some where they wanted like a really light pink, almost like the pink that you would use for a French manicure. And I've actually had men that just wanted a full on color, like lime green, burgundy, it just, it varies. Do you think kids should get their nails done? And if so, what is an okay age? I would say the youngest, maybe four or five, just because I feel like they're a little bit less fidgety and they will listen a little bit better. Doing kids can be really hard sometimes because one, a lot of the times their nail is actually smaller than the brush. So it's just, it's easy to mess up. They also really like to squirm and they're very impatient. So by the time you're done painting them and then if it's really busy, you move on to the next client. A lot of times before they even get into the car, they'll already mess it up. And if you worked on that kid, you have to go back and fix that, at least in my salon. Sometimes if someone's available, they'll be like, oh, you just work on your other client and I'll help you out and I'll fix it for you. But if no one is available, you have to go back and fix it. So sometimes I'll be in the middle of say a pedicure and I have to go back and fix this kid. And then this person is just like sitting there soaking in a tub. So I think four or five, they're a little bit better about staying still. Do I think kids should get their nails done? I think polish is fine. I think it's kind of weird when little kids get say like gel or dip or like full sets. I don't know. I think that's kind of young. Polish is fine, like I said, but anything involving the drill or something that is going to damage the nails long term, especially if you are doing it semi-frequently, because especially when they get say a full set, you have to get acrylics filled every two weeks. So if you're continually doing that, I mean, over time, you're really going to put a lot of damage on the nails. And a lot of times, I mean, kids' nails are already healthy and they're strong. So I think polish is okay, no chip or gel polish, whatever, maybe every once in a while, but acrylic and gel nails, I mean, I think the youngest should be maybe 13 and even then I think that's pretty young. Do you guys talk behind our backs in Vietnamese? I would say that out of all the questions, this probably gets asked the most, if not, it's, it's up there. And the answer is yeah, sometimes. I mean, it's nothing like, oh my God, look at her outfit. Can you believe she left the house in that? But there are times where we have complained about a customer. For example, there's one incident, thank God she wasn't my customer and she would come in to get her nails filled every two weeks. And every couple months when you get fake nails, eventually you need a new set because the old set is, it's old. It's yellowing, it's just gonna pop off. This woman did not wanna do that. She didn't wanna pay for that. So every time her nail would come off, she would just super glue it back to her own nail. Because she just kept doing that, she had mold under her nails and every time she came in it smelled that's how bad her nails got but you know every once in a while she would vent and be like oh my god this woman really needs a new set and she's being so cheap about it also if a repeat customer comes in and we've had a bad experience with them we warn one of each other so a customer might come in and want a manicure and my coworker next to me might take her on and i might warn him by the way that woman is not gonna tip you. So yes, nail technicians do talk about their customers, but it's not as often as you think. At least not in my case, I would say 95% of the time, we're not even talking about the customer. You have to understand a lot of these technicians aren't born here. So English is their second language. So a lot of the times they're just talking in their native language about food, the day, their husbands, their kids. My boss didn't want customers to feel uncomfortable. So a lot of the times, even if she was speaking Vietnamese, she would often throw in English as well so that it just showed that we were talking about something unrelated to the customer. So I think that put a lot of people at ease but you know every once in a while a customer is gonna be just and we're gonna talk about it but by no means is it very often and even so it's usually just like a sentence or two how much should I tip it is just like a restaurant so you know somewhere in between 15 to 20 is perfectly acceptable and should I tip in cash or card always prefer cash if you can even pay your entire service in cash that would be even better the thing about tipping in card is a lot of the times the technician will not get the full amount so say if you tip 
$5. Most times the nail technician will not receive that full amount just because the credit card company puts a tax every single time you swipe the card. So that money that you lose goes to the credit card company. So if you give $5 in cash, most likely you get to keep the full amount. But like I said, this is my experience. I'm sure there are salons where the owner still takes a cut of even the cash tip, which I don't agree with, but such is life. Why do so many Asians do nails? For one, it pays pretty well. I was able to pay for college all by myself, four years, and I came out of college debt-free. So it does pay well without actually having to need a degree. So if people, if college isn't for them, it's a pretty good stable job. I'm not gonna go all the way back, but I feel like because so many Asians already do it, they convince their kids, their friends that are also in the Asian community that it's a good job. I mean, who wouldn't wanna work with their friends and their family? Also, you know, sometimes you'll notice that there'll be one to three people that speak English pretty well and will often translate for other people. So I think the people that don't speak English think that this is a good job because they're able to make money and be able to do something without having to learn English or be forced to learn English. These are all my theories at least. I'll tell you the reason why I started doing nails. My mother, who isn't even a nail technician, she's never done nails, she's an accountant. But senior year, she's like, you know, you should try and get into nails. It's a decent paying job for college. You can make your own hours. There's no clock in, clock out. I really protested this at first because I didn't want to be a stereotype, but you know what? She made a good call because it's something that I can always fall back on. Like I said, right after college, I, I didn't have a job lined up. So nails was something that I could do while also looking for a job. And they were understanding of that. They know that because I was in college, I'm not going to do nails. Like I could have just not gone to college and just done nails. So they were really understanding of my school schedule, my midterms. So that is why I started doing nails. Do your hands hurt from doing nails all day long? For me, yes. My thumb, especially this one, gets quite a bit of pain. I am left-handed, so I would always polish with this hand. And then I would take this side of my thumb and I would always scrape the sides if, in case I you know did a oopsie and for whatever reason doing this motion has really hurt my thumb so now when I do it it kind of hurts but also I had a lot of back issues particularly my upper back because I was doing pedicures and I was looking down constantly I had a lot of strain in my neck um, so whenever I did have days off I would literally just lie in bed and just stretch because my neck hurt so much and there were times where I was even trying to do pedicures and like keep my head up and then look down that that was a stupid decision. But I would have quite a bit of neck, shoulder, like upper back pain. I think I'm the only person who had that though because I asked other people, people older than me who have been doing it longer than me. I'm like, does your hands and back hurt? And they're like, no. I'm, I'm like, okay, me too. Why do so many nail techs wear high heels? I'm not gonna lie, I fell victim to this. I remember at some point I would be wearing like you know, a semi nice shirt, some capris and some stripper clear platform shoes. And it's really common that nail technicians have like really high platforms and it would be such a disconnect from the actual outfit because the outfit would just be casual, you know, like you're going to Olive Garden or something. And then the shoes would just be a whole nother level. I think it's just one of those things where they think that gaudy or flashy means fancy and classy. The heels definitely give me my big fat gypsy wedding vibes. You know, the girls that would just have huge gaudy tacky dresses. And and yet the groom would be wearing an outfit as if he's about to go hunting afterwards. It just, it never made sense to me. And if you're wondering if wearing those heels all day hurts your feet, it actually doesn't because a lot of the times we're sitting anyways, so we're not on our feet very often. And even if we are, we're going from one customer to the next. So not a lot of time on our feet. And oftentimes when I'm sitting at my station and I'm wearing a backless heel or sandal or whatever, most often we'll end up taking off my shoes. I think it's just force of habit. Even when I'm wearing flats, I just end up taking off my shoes when I'm sitting down. What is the grossest set of nails you've encountered? I think I already kind of explained it. Thankfully, like I said, it wasn't my customer. It was the one where there was mold and stuff under the nails that was disgusting. That is the only time I've, I've really seen bad nails, at least from what I can recall. I think feet are far more grosser. Although, you know, I've been doing it for so long that I, I think I have an iron gut for stuff like this. I don't get grossed out about feet, even when they're crusty and they're gross, they're yellowing, they're super long. Like I don't get grossed out by feet. I was always wearing gloves, so I never had to like actually touch it. But I know a lot of people are not like me. So I would say like the worst would probably be when people have really thick calluses. I'm talking the ones you have to go over multiple times, not just the pumice stone, like the razor, and you would have to do it multiple rounds. I have seen ingrown toenails that were so bad that when you finally got rid of the ingrown, it would just bleed because that nail was cutting into the skin and then clotting it, almost like a plug. And then when you finally got rid of the plug, it would just leak blood. So. I've seen that. So that's to say that I have gone through my fair share of really bad nails and I'm immune to it now. <laughs> do you like when people talk to you when you're doing nails or do you prefer when they're 
quiet. I personally don't care because it's nice to have a good mix. There are some where I just don't feel like talking and there are some where they're my actual clients, like they scheduled for me and I would get really involved with their lives. I would know things about their kids, things about their work. I remember I even tutored one of uh, my client's sons. But I'd say a lot of the times I let them initiate because sometimes I'm asking a bunch of questions and I feel like they're answering me out of politeness, but they really would rather it just to be like their spa quiet time. So I'll ask like the typical questions like, do you want me to cut this? Do you want it square, oval, blah, blah, blah. And how are you and stuff like that. But as far as asking other stuff, I let them lead it. And if they don't, then I'm not gonna start it because then it just is an indicator to me that they just want quiet time. What do you do when people come past your hours of business? Oh my God, I have so much to say about this because it pisses me off. It is rude to people do that. I actually told someone off one time as they were leaving, I was leaving to go to my car too, to go home because it was past the hours of business that as I was going to my car, I told her, excuse me, next time you come, you come during the hours of business. You can't be coming five minutes before we close. I don't think she liked my tone, but you know what? She actually listened because every single time she came after, she always came at a reasonable hour. So that worked out pretty well for me, but typically it depends how late and it depends what they want to get done. If you want a mani-pedi and it's 15 minutes before close, I'm gonna say no. But if you come in 10 minutes before close and you're asking for a polish change, typically we'll be more lenient about that. What I really liked about my last salon is it wasn't just my boss dictating like, okay, you're gonna do this person. Like, okay, you're gonna take that person even though they came late. She would say like, okay, are you okay with working a little bit later or do you really need to go home? She would be really considerate about that and she would be honest. So if I said, no, I have to go home, she would turn to the customer and be like, I'm sorry, we're closed. But trust me, no one likes people who come last minute like that. It is rude, it is disrespectful. These people often work seven days a week and at minimum 65 hours. These people have kids and have lives that don't revolve around your precious nails. So if you really wanna come last minute, figure out what you wanna get done, how long is that gonna take with time to buffer, like to dry and pay and stuff, and then figure out when they close and then deduct that time from when they close. That is the latest that you should be going into a salon. Why do so many technicians use fake names. I think it's pretty obvious it's because their names, their real names are too hard to pronounce. I never had a fake name, I just used Ivory, but almost everyone else in my salon did use a fake name and they would just choose whatever is pretty to them. I mean, some people might choose something that sounds similar to their actual name. Is it hard working with family members every day? I was lucky enough that the people that I worked with were actually my in-laws. Like my boss was my aunt through marriage. She was married to my biological uncle. So technically we're not blood. So I would rarely see her outside of work, but she did have her own sister and brothers working there as well. So technically they're my aunts and uncles, but like she's the only one that is really the link to that. If, uh, it doesn't matter. I can't speak for them for whatever reason, even though they all lived under the same roof and they saw each other all the same time and they all lived on the same block. For whatever reason, they were never tired of each other. I don't know how they do that. If I worked with my mother, I think that would be a different story. I think we would just like end up killing each other. But because she wasn't blood and because I rarely saw her outside of work, I think that made it okay. So no, I actually enjoyed working with her. And also when we don't have customers around, we're not just like always bonding. A lot of times like, they'll do their own errands or stuff for their kids and I'll be like studying or watching movies. So even though we would be around each other, we're not bonding. Are you picky when other people do your nails? I don't think I'm a picky person. If you do what you're supposed to do, then we don't have a problem. When people say I'm picky, they make it sound like I'm demanding and I want all these things. Like I would say I'm pretty simplistic, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do something. And if I see you do shortcuts, I will say something about it. I am kind of like this when I was working at the salon and we would do each other's nails. But also now that I sometimes go to other salons as well. I, I try to be as laid back as possible. I'll either be on my phone or whatever. But if I feel like something's not right, I'm gonna speak up. And I think I already answered the question, do you do each other's nails? Yes, all the time, usually on a slow day or if we have an occasion, we'll do each other's nails. Sometimes to save time, I would do one hand because like I said, I'm left-handed. So I would do my right hand and then I would make it easier for a coworker and be like, okay, just do this hand and that's it. I could certainly do this hand by myself and I have, but it just goes a little bit faster if someone does it for you. So that is it guys. I hope that you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any more questions. Maybe I should do a part two. I could also talk about nail school versus actually going into the real world of a nail salon. I could also do a story time of all my crazy incidents at the nail salon. Let me know what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below what videos you'd like to see from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.